This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey, hey! As you guys have probably guessed by the title and the thumbnail of this video, I'm going to make another Monster High redesign today. It's a little series where I take the designs of the original dolls from Generation 1 and Generation 3 and redesign them in my style as 16-inch ball-jointed dolls from scratch. And today I'm going to make one of my personal favorites, Laguna Blue. For her sculpt, my friend and 3D artist Blue Pixie sculpted a special face and some body fins for her that I can print together with my Nova doll body. But as always, we kind of need to print the doll first to even get started with this project. But in order to print her, we need to mix some resin first because we want to match her exact skin tone as close as we can. So I got some resin here and gonna try to mix the skin tone. Printing, as always, I place all the parts into my doll bowl. The face turned out so pretty and I printed the hands in clear blue resin so I could make the fins shimmery later on. But first I need to paint the hands in the same shade as the body, which was not that easy. But of course, leave out the little fins. And now it's time to put her together. I got all my doll parts here so I can finally assemble her. better to put on the fins after assembling so I just super glued them to the calves and her lower arms then glossed them over with some UV resin to make them transparent and after curing I will make them shimmery with my iridescent unicorn powder and then the base doll is done as you can see I went for a blue skin tone because her name is Laguna blue after all. And with the doll all assembled, I can now plan her outfit. As an artist and doll maker, it's important to me that I keep improving my drawing skills all the time. For each of my dolls, I sketch out outfits and face-ups beforehand. I've been looking for some new ways to practice my drawing skills, and then I found this class from Gabriel Bricky on Skillshare. It gave me some new things to draw every day. Skillshare classes cover a wide variety of topics. Illustration, graphic design, music production, marketing, and a lot more. I told Joe about Skillshare the other day, and he got interested, so he joined Skillshare and checked out some lessons on music production. He's working on a song right now that we might include in the video. Whether you want to learn the basics of watercolor painting or learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has classes that take you from beginner to pro alongside a supportive community. So if this sounds something that you're interested in, I've got great news for you. The first 1000 people who use my link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. That's 30 days of unlimited knowledge, completely for free. So if you want to unlock your creativity and learn something new, use my link in the description box and get started. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for helping me getting better at drawing. And now let's get back onto the doll. For Laguna's redesign I was inspired by Y2K and Gyaru fashion because they use a lot of beachy elements and I thought it would fit perfectly for Laguna. So I will make her a blonde wig with cute pink and teal highlights, a little corsage top, a bikini that she will wear on top of the top <laughs> and yes trust me it will look good, <laughs> a denim skirt with frayed ruffles, a sleeveless hoodie made of sequin fabric, some sandals and leg accessories, a sun visor, a handbag inspired by her generation 1 handbag and of course she will get long gyaru fingernails. With that design in mind, let's make her wig first, shall we? I made her a wig cap already and I harvested some blonde and some pink wefts from an old wig and also some teal wefts from a jumbo braid for her highlights and we'll first glue the back of her head until the line on the back of her head. <laughs> Let's go! Thank 
When Laguna has reached the monk stage, I then glue some smaller wefts to the front of the wig until I reach the center parting line of the wig. But let's speed up that boring process with a little transition here. <laughs> For easier handling, I already decided to cut the front bangs shorter and thin them out by cutting into them vertically. I then just curl them and set them into place with got to be hairspray. I then use some folded around wefts and glue them to the center of the wig there's a camel, a camel behind, behind me scratching, me scratching, scratching his, neck. his neck. And I was apparently referencing memes. <laughs> to set those folded wefts, you can also press them down with a curling wand. For the ponytail, I rolled some wefts into a hairy sausage <laughs> and glue them to the wig cap with some hot glue. And then I just fill up the rest of the wig with more folded wefts and melt them down with heat. And then I just put the top hair into a ponytail, which I for some reason didn't film. So I made such a nice time lapse of me trying to give Laguna beach waves. And guess what? It did not work out. <laughs> so I'm using my curler now and I'm gonna film that again. RIP! <laughs> Super quick time lapse here of me curling her hair and now I just have to separate the curls, style them nicely and set them into place forever with got to be Sprühkleber. That's the German word for spray adhesive. It's beautiful, I know. <laughs> And with a tiny hairband added, the wig is done and I think it looks really, really nice. I love this blonde hair color with the pink and teal highlights so, so much. With the hair out of the way, ha! How about we paint Laguna's face? For the face sculpt, I actually told Blue to reference my alien doll because I sculpted her in mind with Laguna Blue's face sculpt from Generation 1 because it's one of my favorite face sculpts. And I hope the face sculpt turned out just as cute. <laughs> After sprackling her face and blushing it, I then start to sketch out the eyeliner with a dark gray pencil. I know I call it sketch, but I always try to make the lines as neat as I can because, well, I have ridiculously high standards thanks to my perfectionism. RIP. But I digress, I need to explain what I'm doing. Ah! So here you can see me sketching out some cute eyebrows. For those I use pastels, pencils and anxious artist sweat. <laughs> After sealing her face with a super clear gentleman, I use some matte black acrylics to fill out her eyeliner. This is simply like painting your own eyeliner, just much smaller and harder for some reason. <laughs> Ah yes, my favorite part, drawing the lower lashes. You probably think I'm crazy for liking this part, but trust me, I probably am. <laughs> but the result is really worth it, I think. Then I just blushed the lashes with some dark gray pastels and of course out of focus. And while we're at it, why not also paint her some white freckles completely out of focus as well. <laughs> Camera, why you do this? And then it's time for pearly, sprackly shimmers. I add them to the cheeks and forehead. And after sealing her one last time, I can then finally gloss her lips and lower waterline with some high gloss liner. For the finishing touches, I just add some piercings and earrings to her face as well. And then I spread some PVA glue to her upper lash line with a Zahnstocher and then add the lashes with tweezers and carefully push them in place. Okay, I made the eyes off cam already and just have to paint them green now. I mix some goblin green with some yellow for a really nice green and now just have to paint the iris with it and let that whole thing dry for like an eternity. <laughs> Afterwards, I can place a small black rhinestone in the middle of the iris and cure it with some resin. When that was set in place, I can then add some more UV resin to it and add some shiny highlights with teeny tiny stars and, of course, some glitter can't be missing either. I then cure that whole thing again and afterwards can add the final doming layer that makes the eyes shiny, sparkly and pretty. <laughs> And here are the eyes, all done. I think they turned out really nice. Oh, and here's also Laguna's finished face. So how about we slap those both parts together? Oh my god, look at her. Ah, she turned out so, so cute already. You can't really see the Gyaru nose highlight that much, but trust me, it's there. <laughs> so I got a bunch of nice fabrics that I found in my stash. And how about we start making the bikini from this really pretty shimmery purple fabric. With the bikini pieces all cleaned up, I then process and thread an elastic through the bra cups so that they will gather together nicely and also add a small little iridescent purple star in between the bra cups. I pull it together nicely and then make some small beaded chains that will go around the neck later. To be able to close them, I add a small necklace closure to them. And for the lower chest band, I also made a beaded chain, put it onto a super elastic thread so it doesn't need a closure. I always have so much fun with small time consuming details like that, but I think they really make a difference in the end. <laughs> Love for detail will prevent you to fail, huh? <laughs> I then made the same elastic beaded straps for the panty and with that the bikini is already done. This was actually the first time I ever made a bikini for a doll but it was so much fun and it looks so pretty and it was actually not that difficult. Also it makes me feel summery again because fall is starting here and I'm already missing summer so much. But now let's make her little top shall we? 
cut it from pink glittery fabric and now basically just slap all the five pieces together, finish sides in. You know the drill by now. And afterwards I just need to glue around all the seam allowances on top, bottom, left and right. Then add a closure and yep, that's it already. <laughs> A super duper simple tube top, but because of the fabric, it looks really glamorous, I think. For the closure, I simply added a velcro. Alright, next outfit piece will be the hoodie. So for Laguna's jacket, I actually had to wait for the sequin fabric and I was really afraid it wouldn't arrive in time. So I actually tried making her jacket from a different kind of material and it looks really, really pretty, but it doesn't look like Laguna Blue. But luckily, the fabric just arrived, so we can go with the original plan now. Oh my god, how beautiful is this fabric? It shimmers so, so pretty and it will look so, so good with the pink velvet fabric. <laughs> but before I can sew anything, I guess I have to cut out the pattern pieces. <laughs> so let's do that real quick. I then first take both of the hood pieces and sew them together along the back seam, finish sets in. I then wanted to film a cool transition where I slap both hood pieces into each other to make them finish and completely forgot to film that. <laughs> so just imagine that here, okay? <laughs> Afterwards, I take the bodice piece and clean up the arm holds with some uru glue. It looks very nice. So now I can slap the side seams together, finish sides in. Then I take the hood and attach it to the neckline, finish sides in. When that was done successfully, I then can take a strip that I cut from the same velvet fabric and will pin it to the bottom of the hoodie. I just pin it with a couple of needles because I'm going to pull it tight while sewing, so it gathers together a little bit. As you can see, I also glued around the front seam allowance of the hoodie, so I can now add a real functioning zipper to it. This is a separatable pink zipper that I will now add to the jacket. You can shorten zippers like that by just cutting them a little longer than needed and then use some wire cutters to remove some of the teeth. <laughs> then burn the edges, fold them around and pin in the zipper. And with the zipper sewn into the jacket, the hoodie is also done. And I gotta say, I'm really in love with this iridescent sparkly sequin fabric. <laughs> I love that it is slightly transparent and it totally gives off summer vibes as well. But the working zipper is probably really the highlight for me on this one. Okay, the time has come to make the denim skirt. The skirt is asymmetric, which is always a little bit of a pain when sewing because you have to make sure that you sew them together correctly, but I think it worked out pretty nicely here. I first just sewed the darts on the back piece and then just put on the side pieces, finished sides in. I also made a waistband, cleaned it up and will sew it on top of the whole thing. For making a frayed ruffle, I cut a very long strip of denim fabric and already cut in some notches. So I can now spend two hours of more intentionally fraying the fabric. I use a needle for that and basically remove all the horizontal threads so that only the vertical threads stay. This took so long and was so tedious, but I think it looked really, really nice in the end. Like, bam, would you look at this? <laughs> now all I need to do is gather the ruffle with a gathering thread and pin it to the skirt. So it will look like this. And then I can simply top stitch the whole thing and afterwards it looks like this. And then I decided I wanted to add a bunch of beads to the skirt because it gives some more detail and looked really, really cute. Ah yes, the tedious, time-consuming, self-inflicted detail work. Always focus on the goal. <laughs> I actually made the beaded chain loose so I can simply glue it in place afterwards. It was easier like that. And last but not least, I'm also adding some belt loops. I just glued them in from the inside and now just top stitch them from the outside with my machine. In the end, I just added a little satin ribbon as a belt to the skirt and the skirt is done. It's such a cute mini skirt and I'm so happy that the frayed look turned out so, so nice. I never intentionally frayed out fabric on doll scale like this before, so I'm glad it worked out. For a closure, a velcro will do the job and I also added a teeny tiny elastic band so the skirt doesn't slip up on the doll. Onto the shoes! I will use some pink glittery pleather for the shoes and first we'll need to cut the insole and some other parts from it. These fabric markers by the way are amazing because they erase by air after a couple of hours so I can just paint on the fabric without crossing a line <laughs> and afterwards just cut them out. The pieces for one sandal look like this and I will also use some teeny tiny snap buckles for closure. To assemble the shoe I will also need the shoe base and the foot of the doll. For easy handling I put some blue tack on the bottom of the foot and then press the insole to the foot and check if it lines up with the shoe base as well. And then I can glue around the toe strap onto the bottom of the sole and wrap it around the foot. I'll then do the same to the back piece of the sandal and also press the ends to the bottom of the insole. Now I simply have to thread on the little snap buckles like this and glue them in place. It looks super cool afterwards so I can spread some uwu glue onto the bottom of the shoe base and then glue the sandal in place. To really press down the sole I added a little toothpick here. <laughs> For the decoration 
decoration of the sandal, I printed these little starfish in white and first will gloss them with some UV top coat. After curing, I can then add some iridescent pearly unicorn powder to them to make the starfish, well, iridescent. <laughs> and it looks really, really gorgeous. I then just take my sandals and glue the little starfish to the front of them with some uber glue. And then I have to, of course, make a second shoe like that because shoes are soul mates. Get it? And in the end, end up with really cute shimmery sandals. I really like the frosted look of the shoe bases and that the snap buckles actually work. For Laguna's handbag, I actually found a 3D file online for her original Generation 1 handbag. So I bought it, scaled it to fit my doll size and will print it in clear blue resin now. After a couple of hours, the 3D print was ready and the bag printed absolutely perfect. I really like how these translucent resins look right out of the printer. And now just have to remove them from the print plate, wash and clean them while my dog was being sussy. <laughs> When in the curing machine, these translucent resins glow so much. Like, look at this. Sadly, those translucent resins become foggy after washing and curing. So I will first need to make the bag shiny again by adding UV resin and some iridescent pearly shimmers. For the hinge, I will use a toothpick because it fits in perfectly, but first need to mark how long I need to cut it. And then cut it to the right length with some wire cutters, paint it gold with some liquid golden paint, and then push it in place onto the bag and glue it with a drop of super glue. For closure, I added a mini clasp with some magnets and can now hop on to decorating the bag. I used some golden chains and also printed more seashells and starfish so I can decorate sad chains with them. I also used some half beads for the in-between spots and last but not least add this little small pink flower because it's cute. <laughs> And with that, we have a super, super cool bag that resembles Laguna's Generation 1 bag. Wouldn't it be cool if these handbags would actually be released for humans to wear? I would so want that. All right, so in order to make her sun visor denim, I cut out those foam pieces and I need to glue denim fabric around it with the all-time dreaded spray adhesive. Oh, this stuff is really, really neat, but I really, really hate working with it. But yeah, gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I really don't like spray adhesive that much because it feels so uncontrollable for some reason, but it does work really neat for projects like this. After gluing the fabric around the foam piece, I then just sew together the back seam with a couple of hand stitches. Burn off any fiber edges and then just hide the seam with a little freight checked fabric strip. For some insight on how I made the inside of the brim, I just glued some velvet fabric to it and then also glue the brim to the headband. Is this the Yankee with no cap or the Yankee with only brim? <laughs> For bedazzling the sun visor, I will also add a beaded chain from one end to the other along the brim, glue it in place and to finish off the sun visor, I also add some cute little pink flowers to it. And with that last step, the sun visor is done. I actually used Frankie's military hat pattern for that, but just didn't make the crown for it. And it worked pretty nice. Get a reuse patterns where you can. <laughs> I also spontaneously decided to make Laguna a little water bottle because you gotta stay hydrated, right? So I used a little soy sauce bottle for bentos that I got in Japan and first prepare a glittery pleather strap with some golden rings that I can then glue onto the water bottle. Then I bedazzle it with a 3D printed starfish and a golden chain so she can carry it. In the end I also glued on some more iridescent rhinestones for some more pizzazz and then fill it up with some water. Yep. I filled it up with some real water with a syringe. And here's Laguna's little water bottle. It's technically completely useless and unnecessary, but I just really like little things like that. <laughs> Laguna's long Gyaru fingernails are still missing, so let's make those now. I already made them the same way as I did for my Nova doll, so if you want to know how I made them, go watch that video. And now I just have to paint the pink with my Posca marker. These markers are super opaque, so I only needed one layer of paint for them. I then glossed them with top coat and also added a layer of iridescent unicorn part to them and then it's time for bedazzle 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 i basically bedazzle the heck out of them with rhinestones nail accessories flowers sequins you name it <laughs> tiny nail art like this is not easy but i always have so much fun with these intricate little things for some reason in the end i even added a big nail piercing to one of the fingers and i think these nails are absolutely completely useless in everyday life so they are perfect <laughs> For the final accessories, I just made Laguna a little thigh band with a 3D printed seahorse from some iridescent pleather, which is attachable to her leg with some velcro as well. 
And I also made her some pink leg warmers from velvet fabric as well. I topped them with a flower and a small ribbon. And I also made her a little necklace with a seashell. And yeah, now I can finally assemble the doll. Ah, yay. That's always my favorite moment. Oh my god, I just assembled her and I love her so, so, so much. I know you guys are dying to see her. So, reveal time. Yay. And here is my Laguna Blue redesign. I'm absolutely stoked how cute she turned out and I love her summery outfit. Thank you again to all of my patrons for the incredible support. You guys are absolute giga chats. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you soon for the Halloween special where I will make a very special tiefling. <laughs> Tschüss!